Hey everyone, Last Rohican stepping out of my wigwam one more time to bring some fresh new content. Now, this video came at the request of one of our viewers, which I'm excited to do. This is going to be a video based on how to play as the great nation of Poland. Now, considering we're starting in the high middle ages, Poland as a nation is not yet formed and is only just a hodgepodge of smaller duchies and counties. So for this tutorial, I'll be utilizing Greater Poland, but feel free to use any nations that fall under the de jure borders since this tutorial should be nearly applicable to all. Now, in order to gain some context as to what we're up against, it would be smart to switch to the religion view of the map. At this point in time, Poland finds itself sandwiched on all sides with different religions. We have Christian France and Italy immediately to our left. We have the small pagan religion of Remuva to our northeast and the mostly nomadic Tengri to our south and southeast, and of course our Slavic brothers directly east of us. With all these different religions and relatively fraction nature of Slavic countries, you can expect there to be a ton of consolidation by larger powers onto the smaller ones within the first hour of playtime, which is something that we're also going to try to utilize as well. Now that we've addressed the religious differences, let's talk about our own consolidation and conquest objectives. The first thing I'd recommend doing is subjugating all the lands that fall inside the de jure boundaries of Poland. Planning as Greater Poland, I'd recommend going after one of the larger duchies first. That either being Cilicia if you have the troops, or Cuyavia directly to your northeast. I would leave the lower chiefdoms for either claim fabrication or forcing them to be a vassal through Costas allies. No need to waste your subjugation on them. Now with no surprise, Cilicia will expand almost as quickly as you do if you leave it untouched. This isn't the end of the world as long as you start making moves into your own weaker removing neighbors and continue to force vassalization due to relatively low prestige costs it takes for rulers who do not have a duchy. So you should be able to still outpace them, but they will pose a problem if you leave them alone. Alright, at this point, you probably should have enough counties, or close to enough, to form the Kingdom of Poland. Do this as soon as possible. With Gavilkind's secession and relatively large families tribal pagans have, you are always in a race against time to make sure your kingdom does not fracture upon the death of your current ruler. If you aren't sure what I'm talking about, please take a quick look at my Gavilkind video on how to control it. Now, we have formed the mighty Kingdom of Poland. Maybe just a little bit of border gore, but what is truly a playthrough without some? With Poland now consolidated, you are now one of the mighty kings of the Slavs, and you can forge your own mighty Adidas tracksuit. Eastern Europe is now your oyster, and can do with it as you will. Here are some things I'd recommend that you can do to really enhance your playthrough. One thing is you can start or finish continuing subjugating your fellow Slavs and taking their coveted tracksuits, and then also beginning to raid Middle Europe to supplement your own income. The biggest worry you'll really have to deal with now is controlling your Gavilkind secession, which an unreformed pagan will be subject to only having Gavilkind for the rest of the game. So here are a few ways to get around it. The easiest path to removing Gavilkind is just to convert to one of the reformed religions, Catholicism, Orthodoxy, or Islam. Or you can get real creative and try to convert to one of the Far Eastern religions. But this way it allows you to ratchet up your tribal organization, get it to max, and then convert to feudalism or merchant republic and then establish better secession laws that way. With Islam, you'll actually be able to just have your strongest son take power upon your death. So that's an even easier route. The second way, and in my opinion the more fun way, is to reform the pagan religion and then dominate Middle Europe this way. This will take a considerable amount of more effort, and you'll need to reconquer holy sites, raise moral authority, and keep other nations from losing holy wars while winning your own. This is a really tough path, but can be incredibly gratifying once it is accomplished. Well guys, that's all I got for this episode. I'll probably keep playing on as, uh, as Poland here, just to eventually form the Slavic Union, which I'll probably try to capture. Uh, this also was my thousandth hour played on Crusader Kings 2, which is wild. I can't believe I've been playing this much time into the game um but yeah so if this is your first time watching um please hit that like and subscribe button otherwise this is last bro Heakin, and take it easy guys